One of the things I love about preparing couples for marriage is helping them explore their marriage vows. The Catholic marriage vows, if you've not made them or it's been so long ago that you've forgotten them, are this. I take you to be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love you and to honour you all the days of my life. And so I get the couple to reflect on what they think of those vows, and I get help them to notice what's not there. There is no unless or if or but or except or until. It is an unconditional promise of love. And so to help them understand that, I get them to play a game of worst case scenarios, where I tell them to work together, not with me, but just in their own time, to look together at what could possibly go wrong in their lives, and then say, even if this happens, I will still love you and honour you. So I tell them to start with some silly ones, say, what if you get uncontrollable flatulence and become really, uh, really um, embarrassing to be around? I will still love you and honour you all the days of my life. What if I become a hoarder and a crazy cat lady and I adopt 27 cats? I will love you and honour you all the days of my life. And then to move on to the more serious ones. What if we have a disabled child? What if we, uh, what if we lose jobs? What if we lose our, our house? What if we have all kinds of, of struggles? To go through each one and say, even if this happens, I will love you and honour you all the days of my life. And hopefully, I say, and hopefully these things will never happen to you, but if one of them does, you won't then say, well, this is not the cruise I sign up for in this marriage. You'll say, I remember when I made my marriage vows and I meant even this. It's a very powerful promise to make. And we know that in our human relationships, these things don't always work out as perfectly as we might hope they will. But even if they don't for us with our spouse, this is the kind of love that God has already vowed to you to love you unconditionally, no matter what, no ifs or buts. And this is why St. Paul could say so confidently what he says to us in the section that we're reading today of Romans chapter 8, the final section of Romans I'm looking at with you over these few weeks, where St. Paul says, I believe that nothing can come between us and the love of Christ. And he means it so much he goes on to repeat it in similar words, I believe nothing can stand between us and the love of God made visible in Jesus Christ. Not life, not death, not any other power. Nothing can come between us and the love of God. And that is so important for us to take hold of and to claim and to believe and live in. One of the things that's really saddened me over many years as a priest is is seeing and hearing good people who don't believe they're good. People who don't believe they are loved by God. Often as we have these conversations in a quiet a uh, confidential place, I say, does God love everyone? They say, yes, God loves everyone. Does God love you? And they choke because they can't say it or they don't quite believe it. Maybe because of something that they have done, perhaps long, long ago, way back in their past, that they don't quite believe God has forgiven or could ever forgive them, forgive them for. Or that something has happened to them, some shame they have, in, they, they have received, some, uh, some betrayal, some hurt, some abandonment, some abuse that they've received, they believe makes them broken in some way they could never be loved by God. And that is one of my delights then is to say to that person, you are loved by God. Nothing you could ever do could make God love you any more than he does or any less. And nothing anyone could ever do to you can make God love you any less. It is simply who God is God simply loves you. And that then makes us worthy. That gives us a dignity that nothing and no one can ever take away. So like Paul, we can with confidence say, I believe that neither life nor death nor any other power can ever come between myself, me, and the love of God. So I invite you to say that. Say it with me. I believe that neither life nor death nor any other power can stand in between me and the love of God. These are powerful, beautiful words indeed. I invite you to to hold on to them, take them to your heart, pray with them and believe them. Because God loves you so much that no matter what you have ever done or anyone has ever done to you, you are still loved.